There are a few tinkerers in history who really understood that a good tool is handy, but a beautiful tool is loved. Steve Jobs was one guy who understood that marriage of function and design, and James Dyson is another. He decided that most vacuum cleaners suck, and not in a good way. So he built a more elegant way to clean our floors and dry our hands and cool our homes, and this tinkerer became a billionaire knight. Here's ABC's Rebecca Jarvis. My solution was a radical new technology which delivers constant suction. He's one of the 300 richest people on the planet, a British billionaire with one deceptively simple goal. You're all about no. suction. Yeah, all about suction, <laughs> all about powerful suction with a small light motor, most important, a very, very fast motor. It's a promise that's won James Dyson a near cult following and a reputation for making the vacuum cleaner sexy. Personally, I find good engineering, good design sexy. Uh, maybe I'm slightly strange, but uh, <laughs> that's the kind of view I take. He's Sir James Dyson, knighted in 2006 and visited by the Queen during the Golden Jubilee. But in person, James Dyson is as down to earth as they come. You walk down the street, do people know you as the guy from the Dyson commercials? I've got no idea and I hope not. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd just like people to remember in my, my, by my vacuum cleaners, not the commercials. So how did Dyson, who started with almost nothing in the bank, make nearly $4 billion and transform a seemingly dull household appliance into a must-have status symbol on the order of a high-end handbag or smartphone? He's one of the few design innovators who's recognizable as a personality besides the late Steve Jobs. He did that by being the dapper Brit he is. There aren't many people in the world who would build over 5,000 prototypes in order to get to the perfect idea. Have you ever been told by your friends, terrible idea and gone forward anyway? Well, lots of people told me the vacuum cleaner, I'd, you know, I'd go bankrupt and it was a mad idea. Almost everybody told me that. What kept you going? Uh, apart from a very large overdraft at the bank. Because, um, <laughs> you know, I knew I was getting there slowly. It all began with his mission to build a better vacuum. Most of us probably remember Dyson best for this simple and humble tagline. I just think things should work properly. He was a character that consumers had never seen before. Part inventor, artist, designer, engineer, and as it turns out, pitch man. Rather than a housewife cleaning up after the kids, he put himself in his commercials. Solve the obvious problems, whatever it takes. I thought that was a perfectly good thing to do. We were a name that no one had ever heard of. So it, it had a lot to do with giving the company character. When the DC-7 appeared on the US market in 2002, the average price of an upright vacuum was about $100. He really rethought a product that everyone had overlooked. Whereas Steve Jobs invented something that was sexy and cutting edge, James Dyson reinvented something that we all took for granted. Dyson needed to convince the average American already satisfied with the average vacuum that they wanted and needed a Dyson, which cost three times the price. We don't do it to make money. We don't do it to be famous. We do it because we think we've something, found a way of making something work better. If you don't do it to make money, then why charge for it? Why not give it away for free? Well, you can't, if you do that, you can't go on doing what you're doing. It has to be profitable. We have to do products that people want to buy. And buying they are. About one in five vacuums now sold in the U.S. is a Dyson, a big chunk of the $5 billion market, even rising during the recession. But critics complain that a Dyson is too expensive and that a bagless vacuum puts dirt in the air when you empty the canister. Dyson brushes that off and says his secret is in the motor. It's so fast it generates more than 100,000 g's of force, three times the force of a bullet shooting from a gun. You know, I'm very, very determined and quite stubborn. Stubborn? Yes. That helps. It helps because, you, you know, you've got to sometimes listen to people's advice and sometimes not listen to it. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be stubborn and persistent in doing what you believe in. Still not convinced? Well, Nightline got a sneak peek at his newest product, the Dyson Hard. It's a mop vacuum hybrid that not only sucks up dirt, it also wipes with a wet cloth. 
So with a name like Dyson Hard, we wanted to put it to the test with a spaghetti food fight between two willing volunteers. Oh, James, I have a gift for you in the Dyson Hard. Vivian and Sebastian actually left it. Can you help? How fast do you think you could clean the whole kitchen? Pretty quickly. I mean, two minutes? You're up for the challenge. Yes. Two minutes. Yes. That's amazing. I think that was about 60 seconds. Nice work. And, and this still sucks. The right bag. This sucks <laughs> at maximum all the time. For Nightline, I'm Rebecca Jarvis in New York.